If you've ever had the misfortune of writing markdown tables in Vim, you probably know it's a less than pleasant experience. So if you extend the width of a cell, well, now you have to extend the width of everything else in the column because maybe that cell has now broken into the next column. And if it does that, well, now your formatting is all going to be broken. So you now have to just make sure everything lines up again. And it's just a bit of a hassle to keep everything working properly. But it shouldn't be like this. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a plugin called Vim Table Mode, which I guess adds a sort of table mode into Vim. Before we have a look at some of the really awesome stuff this plugin can do, let's just have a look at the basic usage. So on my main screen, I've got a bit of CSV data right here. We'll get back to this in just a bit, but for now, just ignore that. Assuming we have the plugin installed, the first thing we're going to want to do is actually enable the plugin. So to do that, you're going to do Table Mode Enable or you could do table mode toggle. So enable will just enable it. Toggle will basically just switch between disabled and enabled and enabled and disabled. So I'll just run table mode enable. And there's also a key binding to do table mode toggle as well. So that would be on leader TME. So in my case, leader is the space key. So leader TME, and that will then put us back into enabled mode. So the first thing we have to do now is actually write the start of the table because it's not going to do everything for us. So if we just write a pipe character here, that will basically say, okay, we're starting a table now. So if we just start typing junk in here, as you can see, nothing interesting has really happened now, but let's just not bother putting a space here and then put a pipe at the end. As you can see, it's actually formatted it properly. And let's do that again. This time we'll put a space at the start and we'll just write some junk and then we won't put a space at the end. As you can see, it formatted that one correctly as well. Now, usually after you've done your header, there's going to be some sort of line break there. And the way we do that is by doing pipe pipe. And as you can see, it automatically generates all of that for us. Now, at this point, this is generally where regular tables get really, really annoying to do. So let's just start writing some junk in here. So we'll do a really short one. And now if we just write pipe, as you'll see, it'll automatically jump to where the pipe should be located. It'll fill all of the rest of it with empty space. Okay, that's already made it really, really useful. Let's put a bunch more junk in here than the column would normally let. And let's just write a pipe. And as you can see, it's now just moved everything over. And we can do the same for this one as well. And pipe. And it's readjusted everything. So this is why I really like this plugin. It just makes writing tables dead simple. I can change the length of this stuff in here. So if we just delete a bunch of characters in here, as you'll see, it should just reformat that in just a second. There we go everything's been reformatted so I can add stuff and I can remove stuff and the formatting is just going to be exactly the way it should be. Now for anyone who's done a bunch of markdown you probably already know that there isn't actually a markdown defined table because markdown isn't exactly a proper spec. So for things like headers and dot points and links those are generally agreed upon. There are some different ways to do them in certain types of markdown but when it comes to a table there isn't actually a defined way to do a table at all. So there, I guess, would be something like five or six different ways to do tables within Markdown. Now, the reason I do Markdown is for Pandoc, and the way you do Pandoc tables by default is a little bit like this. So you have your header at the top, then you have these dashes, and then you won't have any separators between the lines or between each of the columns. In Vim table mode, this isn't supported, but luckily for us, Pandoc actually does support some other sorts of tables. So what it describes them as are these two right here. So grid tables and also pipe tables. So pipe tables were what we were just doing, but it'll also support grid tables, which are the type of tables used in a REST document. Now, that will look a little something like this. So let's just copy this into Vim and see what it'll look like. So this is what a REST style table looks like in Pandoc. It is called a grid table. So both of these sorts of tables are supported. The really lightweight tables aren't though. So if you want to actually enable these within Pandoc, I guess I can just briefly show you that. So in my compile script, basically the only change I had to make was add this option in right here. So dash dash from markdown. So that's basically saying the format I'm converting from plus pipe underscore tables. So plus pipe underscore tables means enable the pipe tables extension. If I wanted to do it with grid tables though, I would do plus grid underscore tables. Not exactly directly related to this video, but I use this mainly for working with Pandoc, so I thought it was a good idea to mention it. Let's have a look at getting this plugin installed. Now on the GitHub page, it shows instructions for Neo Bundle, for Pathogen, 
and also for manual installation. I believe all of these ones are for regular Vim though. So I'm using NeoVim with Vimplug. If you're using some sort of other plugin manager, then convert the steps to whatever you're using. So for my Vim plug, what I'm going to do is copy the author and the name of the repo and then come over to my NeoVim config. Now that'll be located in .config slash nvim slash init.vim. So what we're going to be doing in here basically is coming down to my Vim plug block and basically just putting this line in right here. So plug and then in apostrophes, the name of the author slash Vim dash table dash mode. And then I'll quit out of this, open up a new Vim buffer and then run plug install. Now, if you're using Pathogen, Vundal, or any of the others, then follow the steps to do it with your plugin manager. Now that you've got it installed, let's just have a look at some of the other stuff it can do. So on the GitHub page, as you'll see, it shows Markdown compatible tables and REST compatible tables. Now by default, it's going to only let you do the Markdown tables in Markdown files and then the REST tables in REST files. But as I said earlier, you might want to do these grid tables within a Markdown file, but this plugin has had a bug for nearly a year and a half. There's been a bunch of releases since then and nobody's bothered to fix it. There's a bunch of issues about it. The issues have been closed multiple times and nobody's fixed it. So basically what's happening is that for whatever reason, you can't actually redefine the corner characters from your VimRC. You actually have to modify the values wherever you've actually installed the plugin to. Now, this will very much depend on how you've actually installed your plugin. So if you're using regular Vim and you're installing stuff manually, it should be in the .vim directory, I believe. If you're using NeoBundle, Vundle, Pathogen, anything like that, they'll have their own place to install them to. Now for me, I've actually got a mistake in my uh, Vim plug path that I just never bothered to fix. So all of my plugins are located in the local directory, not .local, the regular local directory in share, in nvim, in plug. Now I should move that over to .local and I'll probably do that after the video is done. But for now, I've got a mistake in my path. So once you've actually located where the plugin's installed, go find the vim table mode plugin. And in there, there'll be a folder called ft plugin. Now ft plugin is where some default values are actually being defined. So the file that we're going to care about is the markdown underscore table mode dot vim. So in here, as you can see, it's got some default values defined. For whatever reason, when it's defined like this, you can't actually override them within your vimrc. So my recommendation would honestly be to just delete all of these and then go define stuff in your vimrc. But if you want to keep them in here, then you can modify them in here as well. So if we want to go and support the rest style tables, what we have to do is fix up these values. So table mode corner, basically table mode corner is this value right here. So the corner of your little separators here. So on both of these, on the header and also the regular separator. So that is your corner. Now the corner corner is the actual corner. So this is a corner corner, this is a corner corner, this is a corner corner, this is a corner corner. And then the header field chart is basically this character right here. So if we want to swap this over to being rest style tables, what we have to do is change this to a plus here. We have to change this one right here to being a plus and we have to change this one right here to being an equals. So if we just save this and quit out of this file and let's actually go and try to make a table now. So if we make it like so, put that in there, put some more junk in here, some more junk. Okay, so nothing's really changed at this point. Also, I forgot to enter table mode, but let's go down to the next line. If we do pipe pipe, as you'll see, it's now put in the line that we would expect. And then let's put a pipe and some junk in here. Pipe, junk, pipe, junk. And as you can see, it's switched that over to being a header now. Put another pipe here and then put a separator. As you can see, it's made the correct separator. Put some junk in here. Pipe, junk, pipe, junk separator and we'll just keep going on and on like that as i said earlier my suggestion would be just to delete these values in here and then go define them in your vimrc because what you can do then is have a pipe table function and a grid table function and then on a binding switch between the two different versions so if you want to do tables for github you might want to do the pipe tables but then maybe for pandoc you want to do the grid tables that would be my suggestion though Another neat thing you can do is you can actually change the alignment of your column. So if we replace this character right here with a colon, what you're going to notice is everything now shifts to the right. 
And if we put another one on this side, what it should do is it should center everything. As you can see, that's all been centered as well. Now this is actually supported when you convert the document with Pandoc as well. So it's not just a visual thing in Vim. You actually can use this productively when you go and generate a PDF file. Now you may have been wondering why I had this CSV data here this entire time. Well, another cool thing we can do with table mode is we can actually generate tables. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. If we were to highlight all of this, and then we press leader TT, as you'll see, it's put everything into table columns. Then all we have to do here is just go through and add the separators. But if you're a big Vim user, you probably can work out a very easy macro to go and do all of this automatically. Now you don't have to do it with the key binding. You can also do it with a command. So let's just highlight all of this again and then go tableize. And that will do the exact same thing. So ranges are supported as well. So if we do colon and what line are we on? Eight, so eight comma plus seven and then do tableize now. What it's gonna do is from line eight plus seven extra lines, it's going to tableize them. So run that as you can see, works as we'd expect. We try that just again. Let's go colon eight comma plus four and then do tableize. Now this is only gonna do from line eight and then the next four following lines. As you can see, it's also working as you'd expect a range to do. But maybe you don't have CSV data. Maybe you have data that's separated by, I don't know, what could it be separated by? Semicolons. Let's say you have semicolon separated data or maybe tab separated data or anything like that. Well, we can do the same thing as well. So we can visually select this. And then if we do leader capital T, as you can see, it gives me a prompt down the bottom here. Basically, this is defining the character we want to delimit on. And in this case, we're going to delimit on the semicolon and it's done the exact same thing. So all of that previous stuff I showed you before with ranges, all of that will still work here as well. We also have some table motions that were added. Now these aren't, I would say the most well bound. So it's left square bracket pipe to move left, right square bracket pipe to move right, left curly brace pipe to move up, and then right curly brace pipe to move down. I'm not a big fan of these binding. You could very easily change them, but they work for what they are. So let's just test them out. So if we're in here and we do right square brace pipe, that will move right, right square brace pipe, left square brace pipe, left, sorry, uh, left square brace pipe, or we can go left curly brace pipe to go up, right curly brace pipe to go down, right curly brace pipe to go down. It's not the best sort of bindings, but I guess they work. If you use them fairly frequently, I guess you can probably get used to them. I'm personally not a big fan of them though. The ones I do like, however, are the new text objects that were added. So we have an inner cell and we have a round cell. So basically what you can do with this is you can do things like uh, change in cell and that will let you actually change the text that's in this cell, put a bunch of text in here and then give it a second to reformat that. And we can do the same thing for this one down here. So let's say we wanna do change around cell. And if we do change around cell, it'll actually delete the cell wall. So we can just put some extra stuff in here, put a new cell in here and yeah, I don't typically find a reason to use change around cell, but I'm sure there's some sort of use for it. So the reason why I added some more text in here was just to show you that even if there's a space between it, if we do change in cell, it will actually change everything that's in that cell block and then change that back to that and give it a second to reformat. It's not the quickest plugin as you can see, but generally when you're just writing like this, it's gonna be quick enough. And the last thing I wanna mention is delete row, delete column, and insert column. So delete row by default is bound to leader TDD. Now, I don't know why it's TDD because for delete column, delete column DC, insert column IC, delete row DD. I get you want it to be aligned with DD, but it would make more sense to be TDR. And I actually have remapped it to being TDR. So let's just test this out. If we wanna just do it on this one right here. So if we go, leader TDR, it's deleted a row, leader TDR, leader TDR, or we can go leader TIC. And as you can see, it's added an entire new column for every single row here. And we can go through all of this and add some new junk in here. Oh. And as you can see, it's now gone and reformatted everything. And then delete column should be pretty self-explanatory what that one does. So leader TDC, leader TDC, leader TDC, it deletes a column. Pretty straightforward how that works. Now, if there's anything in this plugin you don't like, whether that be the mappings or the symbols it's using, you can remap basically everything. So if we just have a look at the help page, if we just write in H and then go table dash mode, as you'll see here, this will bring up the help page for table mode. Now, 
There is a lot of stuff in here. So if we just want to look at something a bit more specific, let's go h table dash mode dash disable. I think disable mappings is what I'm thinking of. As you can see in here, if you don't like any of the mappings, you can just turn them all off. But the other stuff you can do is you can rebind everything and it will show you what the bar character is set to. And it has examples of everything as well. If you're ever unsure about how to rebind anything in this plugin, this is probably the first and only place you should go to because it goes over pretty much everything that you could possibly want to do. Now there is one more big thing that this plugin can do and I'm not going to be covering it today because it deserves an entire video by itself. So you can basically turn Vim into a spreadsheet editor like this. I don't know why you would want to do that but there are spreadsheet abilities with this. So because you can move between the columns, that's one thing that a spreadsheet can do. You can add new columns, you can delete columns, but that's not all a spreadsheet does. This one actually has a way to evaluate formulas. Now, <laughs> I don't think you should be using Vim as a spreadsheet editor. If you want a Vim-like spreadsheet editor, there are programs like that that do exist, but if you want to just turn regular Vim into a spreadsheet editor, I'll do a separate video on this because this is actually really, really awesome. Now, I'm probably going to end up forking this plugin and stripping out most of the spreadsheet stuff because I don't actually need it. I think it is absolutely awesome and I'm going to be doing a video on it, but I don't actually need that. What I wanted was a way to auto format tables and this plugin does it and it does it pretty much as well as I could expect. So I don't need the spreadsheet stuff, so I might as well just get rid of all of it just to speed up the plugin just a bit. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Gabriel, Peter, Lee, Road, Tony, Nono, Wiki, Larry, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and BitTube, and this channel, which is also available on Library, BitTube, and now also BitChute. Also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. This video took about an hour 15 to record. I don't know how. I think it's because I stumbled a lot because it's a very technical video. So I don't know how long the video is going to be. Probably 15, 20 minutes. We'll see in post. Watch it be like 10 minutes. It's not going to be, but... Knowing my luck, it's going to be just on 10 minutes. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.